The town of Smithtown was first settled in 1665. 2015 marks the 350th anniversary of the town. Smithtown is one of the original 10 towns that make up Suffolk County. The town has a colorful and fascinating past, and this year we celebrate its history with many events and festivities. We'll explore this history through a series of programs that look into the past as we look towards the future. Over 100 years ago, the town of Smithtown as we know it today was actually made up of two distinct communities. There was Smithtown, a small community located at the head of the Nessequag River in the area where the Smithtown Bull is to be found today. And there was the village of Smithtown Branch, which was everything else to the east of Edgewood Avenue. Smithtown Branch is one of the oldest towns in Suffolk County. There are visible reminders of Smithtown Branch's past all along Main Street. One of them is the Smithtown Presbyterian Church that is the cornerstone of the east end of Main Street. The church has been standing at the intersection of Main Street and North Country Road since it was erected in 1825. There is another reminder of the past on the Smithtown Library's front lawn where a large boulder marks the site where the Widow Blydenburg's tavern once stood. This Revolutionary War tavern was torn down long ago, but the boulder marks the spot where it once stood. Richard Blydenburg built the house in 1727, and it was quite probably the first home built in the area. His sons built houses to the east of their father along Middle Country Road. The J. Lawrence Smith homestead, still standing on the north side of Middle Country Road, may actually be two of these early Blydenburg homes that were joined together to become one. There are other pre-Revolutionary War houses standing all along the north side of Middle Country Road from Route 111 to Terry Road. These houses include the Franklin Arthur House and the Joseph Reed Hunting House, both thought to have been built around 1740. The Halleck Inn, which was built sometime before the Revolutionary War, became a favorite stopping place of British officers during the war. The Richard Oakley House, which is thought to have been built in 1769, and the Blackman Howell House, which is thought to have been built about 1750. All of these houses still exist, except for the Blackman Howell House that was demolished in the 1960s. At the time of the American Revolution, these homes along Middle Country Road the Widow Blydenburg's Tavern, the Little Presbyterian Meeting House that predated the Presbyterian Church, and the Ephanita Smith Tavern made up the community of Smithtown Branch. The Ephanita Smith Tavern stood on the north side of Main Street to the west of the Presbyterian Church. Originally constructed as a private home, perhaps as early as 1690, the house was converted into a tavern in 1750 when Eponita Smith added a large two-story wing. This tavern became very important in the history of Smithtown. Although the tavern was moved from its original site, it still stands on the Smithtown Historical Society property, a constant reminder of Smithtown's role in the Revolutionary War. Further west of the Presbyterian Church, on the south side of Main Street, just off Singer Lane, is this building known as the Walt Whitman Schoolhouse. The schoolhouse originally stood on the north side of Main Street, just west of the Presbyterian Church, and looked this way when it became a tax-supported public school in 1816. It was here that a young man named Walt Whitman taught during the school year of 1837 to 38. The school served the scholars of Smithtown Branch for 50 years until a larger building replaced it and the schoolhouse was moved across the street. By the time of the Civil War, Smithtown Branch had grown into a little country village. An 1860s map of the village shows that it had 42 buildings clustered around the Presbyterian Church 
and along the crossroads that came together here. It had become an attractive, prosperous village with shipmast locust trees and white picket fences lining Middle Country Road. Spittown Branch boasted a new four-room schoolhouse called the Academy, Eponita Smith's Tavern, Theodore Brush's store, a Presbyterian church, a Presbyterian parsonage, a Methodist parsonage, and a Methodist church on Judge's Lane. Judge J. Lawrence Smith's law office, John Hunting's store, and Halleck's Inn. This sleepy little village of Smithtown Branch was jarred awake in 1872 when the Long Island Railroad came to town. The construction and operation of the railroad through Smithtown Branch had far-reaching consequences. Changes in Smithtown Branch followed, with shipping and freight businesses opening up in the western end of town near the railroad station. Smithtown Branch now had a railroad running through it and a grade level crossing on the west end of Main Street where a flagman would stop traffic when the train was coming. Crossing gates were later installed that the flagman raised and lowered by hand. With the train bringing visitors to Smithtown, hotels opened near the station to accommodate them. Trainers Hotel opened for business just east of the railroad station, and the Smithtown Hotel opened on the west side of the tracks. Daniel Smith purchased a home near the railroad station and opened a livery stable that he operated out of the big barns that stood on his property. Other businesses opened in the west end of town. An indication that growth was taking place in the west end of town came in 1885 when the trustees of the Methodist Church decided to move their building from its location on Judges Lane to a more prominent location on Main Street, just east of Maple Avenue. This decision shows there was an awareness in the community that the center of town was expanding to the west near the river station. By the turn of the century, a hardware store, a dry goods store, a pickle factory, a lumber yard, boarding houses, and other businesses opened up in the western end of town. The dawn of the 20th century brought some remarkable changes in the little country village of Smithtown Branch that was evolving into a vibrant, bustling town. A volunteer fire department was established after several frightening fires happened in the town. In 1910, a group of local businessmen chartered the National Bank of Smithtown Branch with a capital investment of $25,000 raised by the sale of stock. The bank opened its doors in a little building next to John Hunting's general store on Main Street. The original building is still standing. In 1912, a new library was constructed on the south side of Main Street where Route 111 is located today. The building was moved across the road in 1952 to the Village Green, where it became the children's wing of the present library. At the same time the new library was built, Theodore Brush's feed and grain store was given a new facade and an auditorium with a stage was constructed in the building. Assembly Hall was created hall that was used to stage musical productions, hold dances, concerts, and public meetings. Eventually the hall became Smithtown Branch's movie theater when silent films were introduced. In the west end of town, Town Hall was built in 1912, giving the town of Smithtown's government a permanent home. At the turn of the century, the automobile began to make its appearance on Smithtown Branch's dirt streets, but another decade would pass before a significant number of cars would be in Smithtown Branch. But it wasn't long before repair garages, gas stations, automobile dealerships, graded streets, traffic lights, and signs began to vastly change the town's appearance. By the 1920s, the horse and buggy had been retired. The 1920s saw further improvements in Smithtown Branch. 
Electric lines were strung on poles throughout the downtown area, and telephone service was expanded throughout the community, making it possible for new businesses to open on Main Street. In 1924, the Smithtown Branch School was built off New York Avenue on land that had been occupied by Daniel Smith's livery stable, and Smithtown had a central school that housed both elementary and secondary classes, K through 12. In 1925, the Bank of Smithtown Branch became the Bank of Smithtown and opened its new marble building on Main Street. In 1929, New York State widened and improved Main Street and made it a four-lane concrete highway with sidewalks and curbs, and in the process of doing so, cut down the beautiful trees that line Main Street from one end of town to the other. The loss of the trees and the stark appearance of the ribbon of concrete running through town dramatically changed Smithtown Branch into an urban village. The stock market crash of 1929 and the economic depression that followed slowed down the pace of development of Smithtown Branch in the 1930s. Some projects and improvements went forward anyway. A brand new movie theater opened in the middle of Smithtown Branch in 1933, just across from the Bank of Smithtown. And in 1937, New York State came back with another improvement a WPA project that called for the elimination of the dangerous grade level crossing of Main Street by the Long Island Railroad and the construction of an underpass. The town of Smithtown constructed a new railroad station to complete the project. World War II effectively stopped further development of the community, but in the 1950s a flood of newcomers flocked into Smithtown and changes came feverishly fast. New housing developments were laid out, shopping centers emerged in the middle of town, new stores, restaurants, and businesses opened up on Main Street, and today's Smithtown emerged. Now in the 21st century, downtown Smithtown continues to grow and change. Gone are the private homes that used to line Smithtown's Main Street, having been demolished or modified to become commercial businesses. Old, familiar landmarks have been replaced by new buildings and shopping centers. Other parts of Smithtown's central business district are facing changes that will once again transform the look and character of Smithtown's main street and bring Smithtown into the 21st century.